Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this puzzle, Xiphius 2 by Bondi, by using set equivalence theory. Click on the link below if you want to try this puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, I have featured some of Bondi's puzzles before. Uh, I've done uh, Xiphius 2. I put it in one of my tutorials. I'll put it at the end about how to solve set puzzles, but I didn't actually solve the puzzle. So let me show you here, and I'm also using a CTC app, but normally I haven't been doing that before. First thing you want to do when you're trying to solve these puzzles is you want to look, uh, there's five different steps, right? You want to capture two distinct sets, one that contains three to five similar candidates, and then the other that contains three to five complementary candidates. So what you probably notice here is I go around the edge of the grid, two, four, six, and eight, so I've got all the evens on the outside of the grid. And so that's four candidates, they're all the same, and there's actually none of the other uh, odd candidates in there and all. Now you look and you see there's kind of a pattern here in these boxes. So I can do this here, 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 and here, up here, boxes one, three, seven, and nine. And I'll make it purple. Get rid of the blue. And you see anywhere where there's double, we'll just get rid of all those. Right? Because that's overlapping. And we don't care about the overlaps. That means it'll be the same. It'd be the same candidate in both of those. But then we gotta go back, because remember in set, since we put in one column and one row that affects this six, this two, this four, this eight. Well one of those purples canceled out. But then we got to add back, add that back in, because this is actually still part of the uh, yellow set. Okay, so we've got two distinct sets. This other purple set, it's got just the candidates one, three, five, and seven. Nines are not represented, and that's okay. They don't need to be. Set shapes, uh, rows and columns. You know, I did the rows and columns first, and then I did the blocks. And that worked out really well. Can we match the number of knowns to unknowns? So, how many knowns do we have in the Yellow. One, two, got this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So how many unknowns do we have in the purple? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's no uh, repeats. You know, all these purple cans are different cans from what's in the yellow. So we know by set equivalence theory that these two, four, six, and eight have to be in these eight cells. They can only be two, four, six, eight. There's going to be two of the twos, two of the fours, two of the sixes, and two of the eights. That's what set tells us. And so I can put in those candidates, and then we can eliminate any of the ones that are, you know, that are already see other candidates there. So we can get rid of the eights there, we can get rid of the fours here, and we can get rid of the twos here. Right? So let's look over here at the purple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how many unknowns do we have in the yellow? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So again, by using set equivalence theory, we know that these have to be one, three, five, and seven. And so mark those, one, three, five, and seven. We can take out anything that matches. So you see the sevens right there. We can get rid of those sevens. And then the ones and threes, we can get rid of right here. And then you go across down this and get rid of the one and seven. And then these two, you can get rid of the three. Cool. Okay. Can we make some solves that help us fill out the grid? And so I want to say yes. We're going to be able to make some solves that help us fill out the grid. If you tried this traditionally, uh, this puzzle requires quite a few swordfish strategies, as well as some hidden pairs, and there's also some advanced strategies. And we can't bypass all the advanced strategies, but we can pretty much get through most of the swordfish. This set's a little bit easier to do than swordfish. So let's look and see how we can make some meaningful solves here. First of all, what you'll notice is you got a 3-5 here and a 3-5 here. So that means 3-5 is a naked pair. So 3-5 can't be anywhere else along uh, this row. That's very key to know. The other thing to know, 5-7 uh, and 5-7 means that's a naked pair of 
seven, uh, five, seven can't be anywhere else along here. And remember with set, if you count the number of the candidates that can appear, that will help you solve the puzzle. So we know there's only two fives. We know there's only two sevens. We know there's only two ones, and we know there's only two threes. This is key here. So we know that the sevens has to be either there or there, or here and here. Um, because there's only four places for seven, and so it's got to be in one of these spots. It can't be in both. It's got to be in one of these spots. So we know that none of these other spots can be a seven. That's going to help us out. Uh, likewise, with the three, five, here and here, we actually know that the fives have to be in one of these spots and has to be in one of these spots. So you can eliminate the fives from right there. Can't be five. Likewise, you can eliminate the fives from right here. Those can't be fives. And the reason being is that the five is already was already locked into one of those cells. It's already locked into one of those cells. So those can't be fives. There's no place for them. That will help us make a lot of solve. And then the same thing you'll see is the three got to be in one of these two spots, and then one of these two spots, and then the ones one of those two spots, and one of these two spots. Huge. This is huge. All right, let's go and look in the middle of the grid here. So you have a one, two, three, four, six, seven. This is a five, eight, nine. Uh, we're going to have to do some adding of some candidates here to kind of uh, make some more progress in the puzzle. You got an eight right there. We'll get rid of that eight. All right, other things to keep in mind here. Let's look at this. We got, uh, I want to keep looking at the spots that create the most restrictions for us. So let's work our let's work our way across uh, row five first. So we have four, five, six, eight, nine. We're missing one, two, three, seven. So we know that's got to be two, three, seven. That's got to be a one, two. This has got to be a two, three, and this has got to be a one, two, seven. Okay, got that down. What has to be right here is a four and a six because this is a naked triple. 5, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 7. So that's a 4 and 6. So you have all the evens are taken care of coming up column 5. So we knocked that part out. Very interesting. So now where are we going to go with this solve? And the answer... is to look right along we're going to kind of look on the edges here because it's not as straightforward of a solve I don't have all the candidates showing when I'm doing the elimination of candidates it makes for a little bit of a maybe a little bit more of a straightforward type solve we got the, the sevens there where would we put the fives five and five those would be fives right there and you got the five and the five. These would be fives right here. And then uh, seven, seven. You got three spots for seven. We can't do anything with that. The threes, one, three here, three here. So the threes are going to be right there. It's going to be right there. Can't can't be in this spot because it's got to be either here or here. Okay, so those are the only two spots for a three in this area. I just kind of keep track of that. All right, moving on. Let's look at what else we can do here. So, talk about the eights, talk about sixes, talked about the twos. And we talked about the force right there. All right, what's the next thing we want to look at? Okay, so since we made some key marks, remember there's an XY wing in here. So let's look at this. All right. We got one, two, two, three, one, three. This is a pivot. These are the pinchers. So if that's a one, that's a three. If that's a two, that's a three. So any of these two cells C can't contain a three. That means you can eliminate a three from right here. But more importantly, you can eliminate a three from right there. That has to be a one. 
And that's huge, because just by doing some simple set, and we didn't fill out most of the candidates, we can see this nice little X level. So by solving that, then we know that that's going to be your three, remember, because there's only two spots for the three right there. And what I want to do is I'm going to actually get rid of all the coloring now. Because since we've marked the positions for the two sets, uh, we don't need to keep those marks in there anymore. So let's do that. Let's clean this grid. And let's go from here. Because now we've got this one, this three. I think it's going to create a lot more solving. So since we saw that for one, that's got to be your three right here. All right, so we got a three, three, three. You got one, one. Only one place left for a one right there. Get rid of this one. And we're kind of on the way here. We're going to one be down here in block. Seven's got to be right there. So one's got to be right here, which makes this your seven. Remember the one and seven have to be in one of those two spots. Nice. And since seven's not there anymore, we know seven's going to be right here because of the markings that we made. And so seven, seven, uh, this now gives us the five and the seven. Okay. And then seven, seven, one place left for a seven here in block four. So this is going to come together real nice. And seven, seven, that can't be a seven because it's set. So there's going to be another seven here, and then we can finish off the last seven. Sweet. And so where are we looking next? Well, we solved this five, so that's no longer five. Your five's got to be right there. And then five, 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 five. We got the fives in the middle, so we know this has to be a five now. And then we solve that for five because this five is taken. And then we can solve this for a five. And remember, that was a naked pair along with this three, so we can solve that three. Anywhere else with the fives, let's look. This is no longer a five. Um, can two spots for five there? Two spots for five there. Can't solve that just yet for the five. But we made some progress here because now we have our three, and that's going to help us out because you got this three and this three. So only one spot left for a three right there. Three, three, and a three. Uh, three and a three. Only one spot left for a three right here. You see how well that set works for us. And three and a three, we can solve that for a three. And we got all the threes done. And so now what restrictions have we made? Okay, three, we got seven, eight, uh, four, six, so five, nine. So you're looking at one, five, nine. So you got a one, a five right here. So this is going to be your nine. And so that's going to be a five. And now we can get rid of that five. And remember, there's only one place left for a five. Since we solved this five, Five has to be right there. And you, you see now, we, with just one XY wing and set equivalence theory, made a con tremendous amount of progress. And it's very fun, very challenging puzzle. Okay, one more spot left in column five there is a one. And one, one with this one means this has to be a one. So you can solve that. And you have a place for a one. No, I think we got all the ones. So let's move on. To like the next candidate, what are we looking at here? It looks like two, two and a nine, uh, but let's take care of this first. Since that's a seven, that's got to be a two right there. And so now, two, two, all right, well, that can't be a two anymore. And I want to look what's across here. It looks like uh, six and a nine. I'll make those marks. And we'll solve them really soon. Two, six, eight, nine. So there's a six and eight. So this is going to be a two, nine. And this would be a two, nine. And I'll solve these really fast here. Just a second. What's across the way here? Four, nine. All right. Got that four, nine going. Got the six, eight. Got a six, nine here. What's here? Eight, nine. And eight nine, and guess what we have here? This is another x y wing, right? It's a six eight nine, six eight nine. So if that's an eight, that'd be a six. That's a nine, that'd be a six. So both places D C cannot contain a six. So this cannot be a six. All right. So let's get rid of all the colors. And we can solve this for a 9. So nice. Kind of throw in there another 
x, y, one. So you get a lot of play in this puzzle, but because we're only filling out so many, a uh, few candidates, I feel like it really shows those x, y, a lot easier, you know, a lot easier to see. So that's a nine, that's gotta be eight. This has gotta be your nine right here. We already know this can't be a six. So you get rid of that six, and you get rid of this six, which gives us a four, eight. And then you got the four, nine across the top, so that's your four. Here's your nine, nine and nine. So two spots for nine, can't solve just yet. We can get rid of these eights though. And you're looking at uh, two, four, four, eight, six, eight, get rid of this two. And what do we have coming up here? Because that four, that means this has to be a six. That's got to be a two. And now we got our four and I got our two. It's not working out normally. It's two, four, two, six. You know, and now we got four, eight, and eight, six. And because of set, we already know that we can solve these. So if you're not that familiar with set, you need to go back and watch my very first tutorial. Uh, I'll put a link to that right here. And then at the end, also can check out the video where I first featured this puzzle and how to get the break into the puzzle. I've, since that time, I wanted to kind of go back to it and solve the rest of the puzzle and kind of show you how set really works. It, it wasn't a slam dunk putting in set equivalents or it didn't solve the puzzle right away, but it got you past all the swordfish part so you quickly knock out the rest of it with just a couple X, Y wings. So what we're looking for right here, six and an eight. Uh, I'll mark that just to give me a play spot. But let's look at the full house. This is probably the best place to do our solving. So there's an eight right there. And so now eight, eight's right here, kind of a point pair. That means this has to be an eight. And then this would be your six. That will help us because now we got the four and a six right there. And now we got the four and a four. We know this has to be a four, still missing a nine. Cut across here, do a little cross hatching. Get that nine, come back up to the full house. That's got to be your two easy and then you come down and when I'm looking across here looking for a four nine I got a four in column four already so there's your nine there's your four and now we got this nine we saw this eight solve that for a nine and then with the eight now we got the six and we got the eight here cool so I have two spots left we're missing a two but I see a two right there in column six so that's got to be your two and the last one at least is a six if you want to see some more cool solving like this check out this other tutorial for my channel on set. I think you'll love it. Plus, I'll throw in an additional Bondi puzzle for you. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching.